So I hope everyone's having a really good morning. Um, it's been some really insightful things um, discussed and um, incredibly proud of, of the, the team that have presented and thankful to, to Ian and Chris for, for presenting so far. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the roadmap. And, and part of that is actually, you remember in my first um, sort of company update, talked about some of the changes that we've been making uh, regarding the actual sort of development strategy. So what we've um, set out is uh, an agile development uh, process. So this means that we um, focus on the elements that deliver the most value uh, or have the most prioritization, and it's a constant uh, process. Now, what we have is four areas of continuous improvement, and this each of the developments that we, um, we work on falls into one of those areas. Okay, so the first one is technology upgrades. So uh, we used the term .NET 6 earlier. So Microsoft moved the uh, .NET framework on typically on a three-year rolling basis. Um, and obviously tools uh, provide new features, it improves security, it um, introduces new, new kind of ways of, of coding and developing. Uh, but ultimately, ultimately, it's also keeping pace with the industry changes that happen. So part of that is the .NET 6 element. Part of it is things like the controls that enable you to interact with the web app. So the, the charts and the dashboards and the, the, the drop downs, the reporting engine. So all of these things continually um, sort of move and we have to keep pace with that. The second one is engineering. So um, for us as, you know, as a business driver, we want to obviously grow our number of customers. We want to actually be able to try and um, upgrade you on a, a more regular basis if we can without it being as, um, as much human interaction. Um, clearly, uh, with some of the cloud UC providers now, things can change more frequently. So again, we've got to look at how we utilize technologies to be able to actually uh, improve the way that we deliver. Um, improve the reliability of the software. And, and when we talk about reliability, I mean, we, we, we believe we provide a reliable service. This is about um, a repetition of, uh, of tasks. So if you have a, a person constantly inputting the same kind of commands, clearly you'll get good reliability, but if you can automate that, then obviously, you know, you can control it at a much um, higher level. So part of our um, desire is our engineering team you know, they're very talented and knowledgeable. We want them to be more available to you to support you in terms of this consulting uh, and helping you drive the value, not necessarily doing the button clicking and the service creation and things like that. Um, we then have product. So this is clear. This is about what's happening in the UC market, what's happening um, with your customer needs, uh, what features would help you uh, achieve more. What do you, your, your own customers expect? What do your own business units uh, expect? And that's a constant flow. And you know, we every time a customer uh, re requests something for us, it goes into effectively what I call that product backlog item, PBI. It gets logged and we obviously review it. Um, but importantly, we've got to drive that product forward. And this really is a call out to you as our customers that you know, we need to know what you want to achieve. And at that point, we can put things out in forums like this, which will say, these are some of the suggestions. And it is actually an old, older thing that we did at the user groups where we would do the top five wish lists where customers would suggest things, we'd put it into a poll, and ultimately the top five results, we would commit to rolling into a future release of the product. And we'd love to, to kind of offer that type of thing again. Um, and finally, we have sort of more strategic um, areas uh, that, we've, that we offer, so potential opportunities. Now, what would come into that is the partnership with Oak Innovation and, you know, and other partnerships we might be doing where we're looking to interact or interoperate with other providers of a software um, with you know, a much tighter integration into some of the Microsoft or Zoom or Cisco APIs. So these are you know, new exploration sometimes areas and then we'll again look at whether it's a strategic fit so once we build up content and items within all four of these areas what we then do is feed them into that product backlog 
And we have a product owner, which long-standing customers of ours will know, Steve Paris, um, who's been here again, one of the, the 25 year bus club. Um, and he effectively controls all of the product backlog. Um, he's on top of all of the items, the requests, the activities, the planning, um, and he also then supports the team in terms of that discovery phase. Um, we also have what's called a tab. So that's a technical approval board that meets every Thursday. Um, and the reason we do that is because the development team is, is constantly obviously working on today's current tasks. And what we want to do is have that meeting on a Thursday so that we can define priorities of tasks. Um, so if, if there's an absolutely urgent critical need, the, the, an engineer or uh, Sharon, Richard, myself will contact Steve and he will then obviously, you know, give access into the development team to assess that. However, if there's something that you might say, I'd be really interested to know if Tiger could support me to achieve this. We might uh, talk to you about it and you say, actually, if you can tell me in a month, that would be great. So what we'll do is at the tab, we sit down, we discuss all of the activities and the PBIs, and we actually then have defined the, the priority to that. And they feed into what are called sprints. And sprints are a month long duration, and we set an, an amount of work to be able to be achieved within that sprint. That includes all of the, the QA, all of the testing um, that goes with each of those activities. Um, and at the end of the month, we basically wrap everything up and we could release if we want to. Okay, now the reason we sometimes don't is there might be uh, a, a larger piece of work or there might not be a requirement for us to actually provide a number of fixes or in features into the customer base at that point point. and part of it is we also then have this service acceptance phase that we go through so service acceptance is where Richard and his team um, will actually gain access to a release candidate and they will run through and test and accept whether or not that release meets the desired needs, whether or not there are any um, installation issues, whether there are any migration issues. And ultimately we do that before we start putting it onto any customers. We'll also then have early adopter programs that sit behind that where a certain customer might really want a particular uh, resolution or fix, and they might say, yeah, I'm happy to have a slightly earlier version of the software. I appreciate it's not fully released, um, but I'm willing to support you and test that with you. Um, at that point, once we've done the early adopters, service acceptance is all complete, we will actually move that to a release. And at that point, we will deploy that um, on a schedule to all of the customers within um, the SaaS offering, the cloud service. Uh, and we'll also can make it available to the on-premise customers um, and clearly those discussions take place depending on wants and needs. Um, some of you who are on the call today and maybe might not have been aware of the amount of releases we've had over the last two or three years and clearly that's something that we want to keep that dialogue with you on. There are software assurance uh, uh, capabilities so that you can always have a certain number of software updates per year and again, I'd recommend you talk to your account managers um, about that. But how does that really kind of fall and drop down into real world uh, examples? So again, we've got our technology upgrades on the left hand side, the deliverables. So this is um, typically things that you don't really see, but are very important and significant. So the scheduler services, we talked about scheduling reports, alerts, all of those require a service that sits in the background, monitors the upcoming tasks and sets them off to run, deliver and, and perform a task. So um, we have to update those types of things. The collection and ETL, how do we get the data? How do we understand it? How do we transform it? And how do we then offer it to you to digest and do you know, powerful things with? The call extraction service. So again, um, the latest cryptography um, sort of settings. So whether or not it's encryption, whether it's um, you know, security. We talk about the ISO 27001. If we do pen testing and there's, an, you know, there's something that needs to be adjusted, these are all things that fall into technology upgrades. And finally then, 
identity services, which is uh, how you authenticate into PRISM. Some of you will use local authentication, others will use your Active Directory or Azure AD. So again, we have to keep pace with the latest ch changes there. And finally, the web app um, in terms of PRISM itself and the components. So engineering, um, in-platform tenant management, this is a big factor for us and something we've been working on. So the platform was first launched in 2020 and it enabled us to effectively dive into different tenants, but especially for Tiger running lots and lots of customers on a single uh, cloud service, but also some of our partners. And we always had a desire that within that tenant, you could do more tasks. So for example, we want to be able to run um, upgrades at different times for different customers. We don't want to have to upgrade an entire cloud service all at the same time because some of our customers have certain restrictions and change freezes. So we wanted to build in additional capabilities around that. The better on-premise installation um, in terms of the actual installers, you know, our engineers do that. We, we, we're interested in the concept of potentially self-installation, self-upgrades at some point if you have uh, on-premise. We're not there at the moment, but it's a desire that we're investigating. And ultimately reducing time. Again, I talked about this earlier, common intensive time tasks that are repetitive, but we want people to be doing things that add more value, not just doing repetitive tasks. Product, Microsoft Teams, clearly we already do things around the meetings, the queues, but we are interested in what else is in there. And for example, um, licensing that Rob talked about, we want to provide a deeper integration into uh, Microsoft to try and see if we can help you further with some of that licensing need. Zoom, we've done the phone at the moment, but we want to deliver meetings, uh, messages, Ring Central the same, WebEx we'll be doing further work with. Um, but really importantly, the key about Agile is that we will deliver and prioritize what our customers are demanding from us. So it's really important that if you're looking at something different or you feel that there's a requirement within your business that you'd like us to support you on, the more of you that talk to your account managers or speak to Caroline, myself, Richard, you know, I think it's really important that you share that with us so that we can actually gather that information, we can like understand what the need is, and we will pivot our development on an effectively a monthly, two monthly basis to be able to respond quickly to those things. Um, and that's really my big call out from you is that in the past, we may well have set, um, those of you who remember really old user groups, we'd have a roadmap that would say we would deliver certain things in certain time periods. We're not doing that now because we're not defining 12 months in advance what's coming next. We want to work with our customer base and our partner base to actually be able to uh, understand what's the biggest priority, what's top of mind, um, and that will then enable us to put the resources in the right place. The potential opportunities, again, enhance UC functionality, um, digital ready call analytics. We're looking at expanding um, into slightly different deployment products. Um, I don't know how many of you have Power BI in your business or utilize it. Again, we could feed other data analytics and um, you know, uh, data platforms like data lakes. We just need to have conversations about you know, what type of data is available. We also have more cube work to do and Clarify Go integration. We actually feel that for customers that want both Prism and Clarify, we could give you a single interface for that. We can also link information about the, uh, in the, the triggers that they get about people joining and leaving sessions, turning cameras on and off. We think that data could be really valuable and we could actually warehouse that up and add further context to the information we already have. So that's an area that we're really into, like really keen on, and that's like that deep kind of product integration. And finally, you know, AI, clearly it's a big talking point at the moment. Now, um, whether or not we feel that it's really attached to the data we currently hold, um, it's probably, you know, probably it's quite static data what we have, but as we move into that more Clarify Go integration, or we look at working with other data for you, or we, we wanna give you maybe like forecasting capabilities, 
we will start to discover more about those kind of uh, AI and predictive kind of like um, uh, technologies. Okay, so we've got a, a massive roadmap of things we can do. We have a priority at the moment, obviously, on delivering those um, deployment improvements. Um, you've got the roadmap here. So February was what we showed you earlier. June, so this is what we're working on at the moment with 2023.R2. You can see we're 79 software bugs. Um, it might sound a lot, but it's not considering the actual uh, breadth of Prism as a product set. 63 PBIs, so obviously bugs are corrections, PBIs are improvements and features. We've done a lot of work around WebEx, that .NET transition in platform tenant management. Web Farm, for those of you partners who are providing um, you know, web services to customers, it now, now means that you can have a resilient web server set up. Um, and we've also done some improvements that Richard uh, talk, alluded to, batch reporting. So those are all in progress. Some have been deployed already in some respects to those early adopting customers. And then finally, we have obviously coming towards the, the rest of the summer, we're exploring a new API that Microsoft have announced, which is called VAC, which is to do with more enhanced queue statistics. Again, we want to you know, improve that area of, of, of PRISM. Um, we want to do that call recording integration, and we will complete the .NET migration, and that will serve us well for another three-year cycle um, that we can move through. So that's what we are currently working on, and it's, you know, we purposely have not said we're going to deliver X, Y, and Z by the end of the year, because we really want to have that dialogue with you um, to know where we should be spending our time. Clearly, you know, if that doesn't necessarily provide as much feedback as we want, we will carry on with where we believe um, the strategy should point. But ultimately, it is a, a, an agile development methodology now. So um, I think the final slide from me is, is a little bit of a, a personal and business one. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, I missed one. This is the impact platform tenant upgrading. So, um, yeah, it will actually, you won't see this as customers, but this is what we've obviously been able to deliver to help us with those deployments.